Hey guys and girls, it's DC here and obviously as you can see by the overlay, we're doing CyberSec news. Raise the alarm! Just a quick note, if you want to have a look at this news article, uh, you can go to the link on that overlay there. Um, basically, I'm just writing a news article based on the top news of the week um, and putting it all into one nice little news article and then making a video about it. So on today's news, we've got CTFs planned for finding missing persons, cutting bots to test e-commerce payments and pure locker ransomware emerges. So straight into it, first article, Sands and Trace Labs have started a CTF competition uh, in search of new information clues for missing persons cases. The only requirements is that this information is gathered using open source intelligence or OSINT. And um, so far, 75 ethical hackers who work as researchers at the Sands community are attempting to tackle this CTF. How awesome is this? Just by the way, this is probably the best cybersec news I've I've done for ages, the best news I've heard of. Um, as a, a, a lover of CTFs, this is amazing. Anyway, the information is then being presented to Trace Labs who have a team of four examining the findings and trying to build a case based on already known information which is then passed on to law enforcement. Um, so I wrote in here, I personally think that this is a great initiative and as an avid CTF and OSINT enthusiast, uh, this really piques my interest in uh, a ways to sort of get people on board and um, it's, it's better to perceive cybersecurity as something that can be used for good, not just, um, you know, hacking and, and preventing hacks and stuff like that. So finding missing persons through OSINT, amazing. Um, I think it's a great initiative and it's, if I worked at SANS uh, or was offered a some sort of bounty to find missing persons through uh, by only using legal methods, um, yeah, I'd be all over it. I'd, I'd be 100% down to get into this. Um, anyway, this CTF is scheduled to start on the 13th of December in Washington, D.C. at the SANS Cyber Defense Initiative, um, which is just like a center for SANS, basically. It's their office. But yeah, I'm, I'm super keen. I really want to get into it. Um, I'd love to sort of start some sort of initiative like that here in Australia. Uh, if any of you Aussies out there who are in that sort of um, missing persons area and are looking to get someone to help you find missing persons by using open source information, I'm down. I'm, I'm in it. I'm ready to go. I'm keen as. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a really good news story. But moving on, Christmas shopping season is almost upon us already upon us for some people who unfortunately have to buy a lot of presents for a lot of people and where there is online shopping there is an increase in cyber t attacks on payment gateways and e-commerce websites uh, which are the main targets this season there has been an increase in carding bots trying to uh, exploit some of the top e-commerce platforms and vendor APIs uh, for both websites and mobile shopping apps Cybercriminals know that carding is becoming an old hat uh, attempt and that they cannot rely on this method forever. But with an increase in data breaches across uh, e-commerce stores opening around the world, stolen payment information is being uh, more and more readily available for people to basically steal. This issue, um, or the issue for cybercriminals is that the information needs to be validated first before running a large-scale fraudulent uh, payment scam which is where carding bots usually come into the the piece especially in like a large um, attack or like a spray and pray type thing so multiple carding bot attacks have been found already running on e-commerce sites uh, this is in, in the wild so this is right now uh, and the data shows that for events like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and all of the Christmas shopping that comes in between and after, um, the, the traffic of carding bots is definitely set to skyrocket. Um, and they're, they're actually saying, I got this article, there's references at the bottom of the, the article, but 
in this one, uh, they reckon there's an increase of 700%. An increase of 700% in carding bots. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. Anyway, so how do you stay safe against carding bot infecting your browser and potentially stealing your information? Um, this is more for the personal use, I guess, because the carding bot could just be lying on the website and then it's, it's going to steal your information anyway. However, you can keep yourself safe by updating your browser, keeping your antivirus software up to date if you're using uh, Windows, um, or I guess Mac as well. Uh, only buy from sites that you actually recognize, and usually the bigger ones are safer, so in most cases anyway. I'm not saying that like Amazon and eBay are, are the safest places in the world. However, they have bigger security teams uh, than say the little guys, uh, very niche little stores, so just be aware of that. Um, set up an, a VPN to help hide who you are. Um, it's not going to stop anyone from attacking you, but it, it'll, you know, at least they won't know who you are. Um, and monitor your bank account to make sure that the transactions you make are actually the ones that you made. Um, there's not much else to say on that really. It's It happens every year. Every time there's a, a big holiday type season, there's, there's always more and more attacks on um, e-commerce sites in particular. And um, with an increase in mobile uh, stores, which are usually based off a web app anyway, but anyway, with an increase in those, um, yeah, things are, are set to get pretty busy in the carding bot world. So anyway, just yeah, stay safe, don't get scammed, and um, keep your stuff up to date. Next story, Pure Locker, named after the pure basic programming language uh, has been spotted in the wild targeting both Windows and Linux based servers at large enterprises and researchers are saying it's showing strange patterns that outline the more and more malware developers are using it in their suite of tools. Uh, this is I guess because the code is portable of both Windows, Linux and OS X. That's, that's the crazy thing about Pure Basic and a surprising point I guess why so many people don't use it yet but it is pretty fresh um, but yeah it works on everything which is kind of cool um, I guess there's other ones though like Python works on everything as well but anyway uh, in a yeah spray attack which um, is gonna be much easier when you can spray attack multiple machines with the same code it's easy you only have to write one code right you don't have to write it specifically for .NET or, or OSX or whatever you want Anyway, the guys researching PureLocker are saying that they think this malware is possibly just a small piece in a larger chain of attacks which is targeting personal computers rather than enterprise servers. However, it's making its way into both. It's purchasing uh, purchase price on some underground cyber crime forums. Uh, has increased significantly in the last couple of months though, which would indicate the demand for this particular malware is increasing. These um, underground cybersec forums are usually dark web servers. Um, they're just like a, a dark web forum, essentially. And um, they're just like buying markets where you go on there and you buy whatever it is you want and that's what you get, usually. Um, but yeah, it's uh, interesting to see where Pure Locker is going to go in the next couple of months with online shopping due to increase. Uh, so keep an eye out for what might be to come on the next large ransomware attack. Um, I've got a reference to all of the articles that I talked about here, just so no one says I, I copyrighted them. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, CyberSec news. Don't forget to like, uh, comment below if you want to increase my channel's traffic. And of course, subscribe for more of these videos. Um, I've got a schedule coming up of every single week there's going to be a CyberSec news. So um, definitely worth uh, jumping on board and, and getting into the, the know of what's happening in the CyberSec world. Yeah, that's it. I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later, guys.